The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Uh, October the 15th. It is Terrific Tuesday, and welcome to today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes. Look, I'd absolutely love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can send me an email like Robert here did. Uh, do that at steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den, like Coda did. Uh, you can send me any kind of ping, private or otherwise. I just simply want to be able to uh, get to to whatever it is that you're interested in looking at. This hour is really all about you. Let's keep it all about uh, you out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on terrific uh, Tuesday. Of course, uh, this is Tiger Financial News Network. Uh, let's go ahead and begin by uh, taking a look at the equity markets, all to the upside. You've got the Dow up 269 points, 1%. Everything is up 1%. The semis are up 2 and 3 tenths percent, 36 points. It's trading down at 1627. Spot volatility index doing what it's supposed to do, trade lower, down 92 cents, 6% to the downside out there, trading out at 1365. Speaking of uh, 13s, did we say 13? We did. The spot volatility index was at 13. Gold is up $13 and change. Silver down 29 cents. Light sweet crude basically flat. It's off six pennies. Natural gas is up four pennies out there and bonds are off by one full point uh, trading out at 160.03. So the things that we're going to have been requested so far is uh, Robert wants to take a look at natural gas and treasury bonds. He wants to go long natural gas either by uh, by UNG or UGAZ. Two of the ETFs out there. One's a single one is a triple I believe. And the other would be to short the TLT by buying uh, the ETF TBT. I believe that is a triple inverse uh, ETF out there. So uh, Robert would like to uh, do it. He wants to do it right now. So if he wants to do it right now, let's go take a look at those instruments, try to assist him in any way that we can. Uh, Coda wants to take a look at uh, the GDX, kind of longer term. We'll take a look at it for each of you out there for longer and shorter terms, just so you can get a feel for what the uh, message of the markets is based upon the charts. But let's, be, let's begin by taking a look at Treasury bonds out here. And if we take a look at Treasury bonds, we're looking at just the daily time frame. Uh, what we know is that uh, we know that we use the TAS market profiles just simply to help us identify support and resistance. This is our virtual football field. This is your opportunity to become Bill Belichick or whichever coach it is that you want to become out there. And here's your team. Your team are bulls and bears out here. So you've got the top view, and you get to figure out what they're being, what's being communicated to us. So bulls and bears, and you get to be Mr. Belichick out there. If we take a look at uh, Treasury bonds, here's what we know right now at 109 in the afternoon. Prices trading below support. Support is the bottom of the daily profile. That's 161.01. Uh, John in the den wants to be Bobby uh, Knight. Th that's fine. That's good. I just uh, I don't know if he's in a, I don't know if a chair throwing mood out there. I will not throw any chairs at you. Never thrown a golf club. Have hit many golf shots. Or should have just simply thrown the entire golf bag. Uh, but uh, everything in life happens for us, not to us. And I've made eagles from some of the weirdest spots and positions that you ever could. And that really kind of helped to teach me about everything happens for a reason. But if we do take a look at Treasury bonds here, right now in the daily time frame, we know that price is trading below support. Now, here for Treasury bonds, you're going to see there's a lot of data off to the left that we don't see because it's a December contract. So we really want to do what we really want to do is try to use Stevie's synthetic contract out here. And the reason is because what we're going to also do, and sometimes the profiles will change there. Oh, that didn't work. Oh, I know it, it didn't work because here's this is one thing I have found with eSignal. E Actually, I have found this with every application I've ever used. If you type in the wrong thing, you're going to get the wrong thing. 
And uh, so now we've just typed in the correct symbol out here. Now, the, what I wanted to do for Robert was to say, okay, price is below support. If we just simply use our TAS market profiles, where's the next level of support? And for that, what we would do is we would look for the weekly time frame. So let me go ahead and we'll put the weekly time frame profiles out here. And so in this case here, you can see that what Robert is doing is he's gunning for, he would be gunning for 156.20. That is the top of the uh, weekly profile. Okay, so we've got that there. Is there any reason here that Robert should not take the trade in TBT? The answer is no, there's nothing that I see. Now, let's go take a look at Stevie's white backgrounded charts out here. Let's get a different picture, a different view of the 30-year Treasury bond. What else do we know? Well, we know that uh, price is trading below Stevie's green line. So that says that price wants to continue moving back further. We also know that there's a breakout level where T-bonds where actually broke out was at the price of 153.27. Now, how could T-bonds get all the way back there? Well, one way is they could. Not saying they're going to just yet, but they could form an A to B equals CD to the downside. And the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD to the downside gives you a price projection of 153.45. Now, that really doesn't come into play until bonds close below the trading session of the B point, which is September 13th. So it's not there yet, but that's the potential in essence that Robert would be looking for. So when we take a look at the daily time frame charts, and in essence the weekly time frame chart, because we looked at the weekly profiles, there's absolutely no reason here for you and I to give Robert the, uh, the ixnay on the uh, short snay, so to speak, out there. However, however, the question becomes when's the ideal time to enter this trade? Is it right now? And the easiest way for me to answer that is to go look at a shorter term time frame. Is there any signal coming from a shorter term time frame? So to do that, I'm just simply going to fall back to our 30, 30 minute time frame chart. And here's what we know about the 30 minute time frame chart. Both you and I are suggesting to Robert to just sit tight. Sit tight because at 11.30 this morning, 11.30 this morning was the TD setup nine count. It was actually at 11, but the bar following bar number nine made a lower low. That is, uh, that's, that's, that's a part of the program. The low would either take place in bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. That is one. And so until that low gets taken out, and that's 160, even Stephen, Robert, there's the potential. It's not a likely potential, but there's the potential that you're going to see some type of rally. Where would that rally take it to? About one. 6047 right now that's Stevie's uh, red line out there but I think you're looking at this as more of a long-term type of a uh, trade out there and so if you're asking me at 1 13 in the afternoon is there any reason to not take this trade the only reason would be because you're really trying to time it and you're trying to time it from the standpoint of trading the bond futures contract and you're not trying to do that you're trying to either short TLT and ETF which trades for basically six and a half hours sure there's some extended trading but you're gonna to get typically ripped off during those time periods. Not always. And, and, and the TBT, another ETF that is out there. So maybe the timing of it wouldn't even work for you because the different tests that we'd be looking for could happen in overnight, early morning type trading out there. So I'd say fire away if you want to go ahead and take that. I can't find the reasons to not take that trade. The last thing we would look at, would be, we'd want to understand, hey, how are T-bonds trading in all the major currencies? Well, they're totally lower in the case of your uh, pounds out here. Made a slightly lower low in yen, uh, lower low in euros, slightly lower low in dollars. You've got the green light. To fire away. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be back. We'll take a look at natural gas contract and then the GDX. If you're not currently using the TAS profile scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to switch over and take a look at the uh, natural gas contract out here for uh, Robert. Uh, give me one second here. It's trying to do two things at uh, once. That's always a dangerous thing. Um, Z, there we go. Okay. So well, let's focus on, so Robert, what Robert wants to do is he wants to go along natural gas. And uh, Robert, one thing that we know is that uh, the natural gas contract has formed a new daily TAS market profile. That's the right-hand panel uh, screen that we're looking at. And so resistance there is $2.35. Now the structure of this box is, is bullish, meaning that the center is closer in proximity to the bottom than the top of the profile. And so uh, if you are to be bullish natural gas, you really need to see a close above that level. So you're very close. You're at 234, 235 uh, is the is the area. And I would say you're going to stay put and you're going to wait to see if this how this test unfolds because you could find that the top of this box is resistance. I just don't, well, we know it's resistance, but I mean resistance enough to go ahead and see another pullback inside of natural gas, even maybe a lower low. It's a possibility. So here's what we know. So you're so close to resistance, you would never, um, uh, well, you could do whatever you want to do, but I, I would never suggest that now would be the time that you would fire away. We couple that when we take a look at natural gas with the fact that it's also uh, taking on its oscillator and change line. Now, granted, price is above it, but just by, uh, you know, just by a smidgen out there, 2.321 is Stevie's red line. So a close above both of those levels today would be positive. And what that would say, it would say that this Gartley buy pattern, that's what we're looking at here is in play and you would anticipate that price would make its way up to uh, its recent breakdown level and that's at two dollars sixty three cents maybe hard to see but there's a solid green line going across my screen out there that is resistance now if today we see price fail and close underneath Stevie's red line out there uh, that says price is headed back to support that would might be 220 
it is 220. That's the bottom of its profile. So I'd rather you enter that long position there. So what you really need to do in order to say, yeah, now is the time to go long natural gas is you'd want to go ahead and do this on a momentum move with price going ahead and closing above resistance. Now, the profile levels are slightly different on my e-signal system versus Ninja Trader. Both are really right. Uh, how can I say that? They can't both be right. Here's what I'm going to say we're going to do out here, Robert. You're going to rely upon $2, 2.356 to be exact. And that's coming off of the e-signal system out there. So uh, you've got one go ahead and one maybe go ahead out there. If I take a look at uh, natural gas, pull over its 30 minute uh, time frame out here uh, it it looks like it should be able to take out those levels in looking at the 30 minute time frame the reason I'm saying that we can see a little TD setup nine count that did not contain price whatsoever but nonetheless it's just uh, pennies away out here uh, and wait to see price clear that level and uh, ideally close above uh, 2.356 out there so thanks for writing in I hope that that helps you out and best of luck with those uh, trades. We had a request as well to go ahead and take a look at the GDX from a long-term standpoint. Then the question was, do I use the TD setup counts on the monthly chart to go ahead and take a look at uh, gold or the GDX? And the answer is that I do. Oh, oh shoot, I changed that. Gosh darn it. Um, okay, let me do let me do this out here. Hey, Coda, if it's okay with you, and I'm going to assume the answer is yes, just some simply so I don't have to change this. John was asking about ZS, and I accidentally went ahead and changed that. I didn't realize I was changing that over the GDX. So let me just come back to the GDX real quickly, because I can answer his question, then go to then go to that. But basically, what John was asking me about, give me a minute here. Let's come take a look at the soybean. Uh, give me a second to, uh, to put that up on our chart out here. And I'm just, where did I stick it? Yeah, no, I heard you tell me where to stick it. I, I, heard, I heard you loud and clear. But let's go take a look at the soybeans. Let's take a look at the uh, daily time frame panel. That's the right-hand panel out here. And we, got a, we, do have a new, we do have a new daily profile that formed, John. And that new daily profile is below price out there. I, I know you're saying to yourself, what? No, that was me saying that to myself. Because, uh, but, but when you see that... The interpretation is supposed to be, and this comes from the uh, Taz Savant out there, Mr. John Logan, that this is a bullish, very bullish outcome to see that. Uh, however, what John doesn't have or use, so to speak, out there is some of Stevie's tools out there. And so if we go take a look at Stevie's other tools, and John was, in essence, asking for a price target out here. Well, price is sitting at the price target. So here we're taking a look at the November contract. And when we looked at this a week or two ago, right, we took a look at this a week or two ago. We took a look at the uh, bullish activity and suggested that price would make its way to 941.25. That is where price broke down. That's using the TD setup counts out here. And so if price can clear this, and there's nothing here to indicate that it won't, but it's the same kind of thing that Robert was asking about. And right now we're looking at resistance, which we can see has held over the last couple of days out there. Now, this is the daily. Uh, John in the uh, den said, hey, go switch over to the, the continuous contract and take a look at it. So we'll do that. We won't look at the daily. We'll just simply take a look at a monthly time frame chart, see what we can figure out here, uh, see if there's anything that helps us. And I really don't see much out here on the monthly time frame, John. Uh, hey, Coda, by the way, here's a monthly chart. Here's a TD setup nine count uh, for soybeans. This is back in September of 2012. It most certainly identified the top or the high out here. You also had a Rhodes momentum indicator signal on that same bar out there. But I don't have anything at the bottom that gives us some type of great bottoming signal like the high did back there in 2012. So let's go take a look at, I don't have really a price projection for you there. Um, let's take a look at the weekly time frame chart. And the weekly time frame chart does have its promise. The weekly time frame shows that when price was making a bottom back in May, May 17, 2019 specifically, it did so with a Rhodes momentum indicator signal and pattern. How did it do that? Price was moving lower, doing less relative energy, and it just so happens that on that same candle, it generated a Japanese piercing candle 
But what it also did, what it also did was it created a key reversal session out there. That's when the high and low of the prior bar uh, gets exceeded. That's when the close is in the opposite direction of the trend. It did that. And that is when you are in an extended condition. Well, we know that it's an extended condition, especially because what we have out here is what we have is we have the roads momentum indicator. So now that price is above a B point. First, long term, John, just like we took a look at on the daily time frame, long term, what this should be gunning for is 10.50.75. That's the breakdown on a weekly base that takes you back into May 25th, 2018. So that's one pattern out there. That's one projection area. The other projection area just simply becomes using some levels of A to B equals CD patterns. The one to one is up at 970. The one to 1 1.272 is 1,005. Then you've got 1,050 out there. So those are the price projection levels. There's nothing on the weekly time frame chart to suggest that the run is over. But the, and the confirmation of that will come when the daily time frame chart for soybeans goes ahead and clears that uh, first level that we gave you. First level that we gave you was 941 and a quarter. Otherwise, on a pullback, 926 is the area to buy. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, we got a caller on the line. We got Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? I'm doing just fine, Steve. How are you? 
I'm doing well. Thanks so much for asking. And uh, U.S. Silica Holdings, the sand company, the sand man out there. Uh, tell us what you're doing and how I can help you. I don't have a position at present, but I was hoping you could take a look at it as uh, it potentially bottoming. It just seems like it's getting down to a level where it's kind of basing and um, seem to be doing that with less relative weakness. So I just wanted to have you take a look. I wasn't sure where the counts were at. Sure, sure. Okay, so let's go. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So the first thing that we know, uh, U.S. Silica Holdings, folks, ticker symbol is SLCA. If we take a look at its daily time frame, there's a brand new profile that formed bullish in structure. Bottom of the box has been tested the last two days. It's held, and that bottom of the box level is 762. Top is 849, and the center is 791. So not until we see a close above 849. Will some type of resistance have failed to suggest that price would go higher on this? Price is below the bottom of the weekly profile and below the bottom of the monthly profile. So let's just begin with the monthly time frame out here, see if there's any kind of signals longer term. And what we can see is price is broken below the breakout area, which was 1182. Folks, this thing had gotten in September of 2014 up into the 75 ish area. We're talking about a trade at 776 right now. But on a monthly chart, what we can see is that. That price is moving lower, doing less relative energy out there. Wave number five to the downside and bar number six on a monthly basis of a TD setup nine count. If it were to form a nine count, you're several months away from this uh, generating a bottom uh, signal. It doesn't have to because there's another pattern out here. If we were to see a bullish reversal candle this month or next month or any month, as long as this pattern exists out here, um, that would suggest a uh, bottom. If we look at the weekly time frame, we're going to see that price is also stretching to the downside. With regard to any type of uh, counts out here, no TD set. Well, you're in bar number three of a uh, down count, so this would be many weeks away if that were the pattern that was going to form out here, um, a bullish reversal candle would suggest possibilities or at least a counter trend rally. And the reason I say that is because we did get a road momentum indicator pattern back here in June of 2019, but that just led to a rally of, and a small rally for really just a few more weeks out there. So that didn't uh, work. Let's take a look at the daily time frame out here. The daily time frame for SLCA shows what? It shows that today should be a bar number seven of a TD setup nine count. We know that the lows would occur if this is the pattern that will identify the bottom of bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. So you're days away at least on that. No uh, roads momentum indicator signal present at this moment on the daily time frame. Uh, an A to B equals CD to the downside for sure. Let's take a look at that pattern. This this could set up maybe a butterfly, but let's not worry about whether it's butterflies or Gartleys. It's just the A to B equals CD pattern. Brent, that says uh, watch the 698 area. That would be the one-to-one -one extension of that pattern and if price could get down there give you a nine count generate some type of bullish reversal candle you should see at least a counter trend rally well first it would be to the top of the profile the other might be to 1145 where this uh, last uh, broke down so that's what i see when i take a look at uh, silica holdings out there okay yeah that helps considerably i just didn't think it was quite there, and that kind of confirms that. So it helps to have you go through yeah. the counts and just do you know anything generally with the with its uh, downward movement here. Yeah. Do you know anything about them fundamentally? I think one of the reasons that they ran so uh, so fast to the upside was more fracking related. So has that business for them? Is, do you know if that's the, do you know anything about them fundamentally? I guess that is one of the areas that they, of course, are involved with, but. They uh, they do have other applications for their that material that's used okay. in a lot of different industries, but I think it is most closely tied to yeah the oil industry and the fracking, like you said. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. Well, hey, look, that's what I see. And uh, was there an earthquake out there last night? Some guys in the den asking the question. I was going to comment on that. Yeah, there was. As a matter of fact, the epicenter was about probably about a mile from my house. Really? So it was, uh, yeah, really close. And it's, I've been through, I've been in California my entire life, 58 years. So I've been through a lot of them, Loma Prieta, and, and just there was another one on the Greenville Fault. It's kind of, I don't know if you know where Livermore is at, and uh, kind of around the Bay Area. That was yeah. back in the 70s. And uh, I've just been through a lot of it. We had one in Napa. There's been 
quite a few, but that one just because of the proximity to our yes. house, it was. Yes. I definitely felt it. it. There was a few things fell off the shelves and open cabinet doors in the you know in the kitchen and scared the heck out of my pets and you know my wife a little bit too. And so it gets your attention. I was just kind of going to, to sleep when it happened. So it woke okay, me up for sure. Wow. So 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 your 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 pets do they do they anticipate it? Just a tad before it's actually. I mean, you may not have recognized it or noticed, uh, but I just wondered. I mean, they're they're close to the ground. They can feel things maybe a little bit easier than you and I can, or they have other senses. Um, so we anything had a smaller on one the other day that we thought our cat kind of let out of me out before it happened, but it could have just been a coincidence, you know. But yeah. I do think, yeah, they they think there's some, you know, that they can sense that a little bit. And my wife did feel. There was a smaller one. I think it was uh, the the one that was the bigger one was close to five, and, but the one she felt prior to that was I think a two point two, and so she thought she had felt something about ten minutes before that one hit, and that was the case, I guess. So yeah, there's sometimes we get the little ones before, other times we get aftershocks. It just depends. Well, we're glad to hear that you're you're okay, that everyone's okay, and if you if you ever get tired of those earthquakes, we'd love to have you here in Delray Beach. <laughs> That's one of the few things we have to deal with here, and they are a little weird. So there's no, of course, you yes, know, I would think so. No forewarning, you're gonna, you know. Have yeah. the thing hits you, but it's just that's I'm kind of used to it now. Like I said, I've been here a long time, and but it, it is kind of gets your attention for sure. All right, hey, thanks for sharing. Glad that you are safe, and uh, we'll look forward to uh, speaking to you soon. All right, thank you for your help, Steve. I'm glad you're back and feeling good. You're sounding great. So just take care and have a great week. Thanks. Much appreciated. All right, so let's go get to the GDX out here for Coda. Uh, he, he's going to believe that we're never going to talk about it, but we are going to talk about the GDX out here. And so that's the first chart, uh, or our three charts, I should say, that we're taking a look at out here. It doesn't really get to his question just yet, but here's what we know right now. The GDX is trading below the bottom of support bottom of support. Below support for the daily and the weekly happens to be the bottom of its daily profile. Well above the uh, uh, level on the uh, monthly chart because the top of that box is a 20, 29 out here. So support has been broken daily and weekly. With regard to the uh, GDX and, you know, do I take a look at the uh, at all of the tools that you and I just looked at to assess what's the market's message to you and I? So the answer is yes. And we took a look at some symbol. I think it was soybeans. We saw the TD set up nine count that identified a top out there. We take a look at a monthly chart out here for the GDX. We have an ongoing count right now. We're in bar number five on a monthly basis um, but we don't know if a nine count is going to persist out here uh, for a monthly time frame we know that price is above stevie's green line but what i want you to notice is the phenomena see how this green line turned color was used to be red up until july of this year this tells us my line and price are going to catch up to each other so coda right now the monthly chart is suggesting the gdx is headed lower but we'll be right back. We'll take a look at the daily and the weekly time frame, try to figure out where it's headed to. Maybe it's 2418. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Target First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Target First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. 
Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were taking a look at the GDX on a monthly basis before it we went to break. Here's another view. It's the bottom panel on this chart uh, on the, of the GDX on a monthly basis. The top panel is the uh, continuous contract for gold. So you can clearly see the directional correlation. You and I have proven that by taking a look at daily time frame charts and using my correlation tool. and just simply shows a positive correlation up or down, whichever direction. So it means we also, in analyzing the GDX, we should really pay attention to what gold is doing. But Coda, one of the things that that I would have you uh, pay attention to is the 3135 area. Uh, and 3135 seems to be a real key resistance level. Now, slightly above that, it's the August 1st high. You may have noticed that that was a bear sash candle. And that high is uh, 3179. So between 3135, 3179 is real significant resistance. What did the GDX do when it got up there, got up there, and, and it uh, turned back. Created that little dark cloud cover. You got now got a shooting star, but you're only halfway through the month out here. Likely, longer term, I say between now and January, what price might be doing is it might be just simply targeting this rising trend line. That takes you back into the 2015 time frame, that low, and then the September 2018, 2018 area. And that would take us into about the $19 or $20 uh, type area on the uh, GDX. Um, and I'm being serious about this. Do not underestimate that as one of the potentials that we have out here. Now, if we take a look at the weekly time frame, why would Stevie say such a thing? Blasphemy out there. Mm, blasphemy you, not blasphemy. But if we do take a look at what the weekly time frame chart here for GDX has generated for us, it is a major sell signal. You've got that rose momentum indicator top pattern out there. Price moves higher, does less relative energy, big old bearish engulfing key reversal candle. That's the week of September the 6th. The very following week, price gets below Stevie's green line out there, suggests we want lower, uh, lower price. We're now making a new low on this move lower out there. We know that that means you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. And at 2028 is where, on a weekly chart, the GDX last broke out. So significant topping pattern. Price trading below support on the daily and the weekly profile out there. And now you've got the A to B equals CD pattern. So maybe price doesn't make its way to 2028. Uh, and maybe it's just simply a one to one A to B equals CD. Gets to 2522. Maybe it's just the one to 1.272 at 2403. Like I don't know. We'll just simply have to pay attention to the charts because it's really the, the role of you and I as a technician is to just simply use the new information that gets provided to us. 
It's also about using the information that's currently on the chart and the history. The his history. What the heck is that? But the history of the chart, take a look at other patterns that are out there. So at this stage here, the clear message for GDX, and, and no TD set up nine count. I don't even think it was a, uh, a wave count. Let me just see where, where was it really to the upside if I start from here. That got to wave number. Oh, well, that got to Coda. That got to that got to peak D. I don't know if peak D is in the den, but if I really start from the lows out here uh, from way back in 2018, what did it get to? Now it wasn't wave number seven or anything, but it was the road momentum indicator uh, topping signal that uh, has has confirmed that price wants to move lower, and that's what we see going on right now. Now, if the GDX is doing that, the question is, is, is gold doing that? Here's the daily, by the way, before we uh, get out of Dodge here. No, 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 nothing on the chart out here to suggest otherwise. The chart here that we're looking at, the daily says the next stopping point on the move lower, I'm not talking tomorrow and the next day, is 22.75. But that really is the next price target to the downside. You're trading at 26.31 right now. And really, that's the same message that we're getting from gold. Uh, gold hasn't broke through support. It's got its next level of support to deal with, which is 14.72 for the past couple of weeks it's trading between support the bottom of its box at 1472 and stevie's green line currently about 1505 is what we'll call it out there um but the uh the and it's got a roads momentum indicator top on its daily on its weekly time frame out there so really all the signals are for gold to move lower now 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 hold on a second here because some of you are going to say oh, you're going to see some type of rally over the course of the next several hours and say, you know, that guy didn't doesn't know a hill of beans. Now, actually, you don't even need a rally to be able to make that statement. However, with regard to that hill of beans and why you might see a rally would be by taking a look at that 30 minute time frame chart like Robert and you and I did. When we took a look at natural gas and say, well, is now the time to jump on that short train out there. And the answer would be mm, maybe not. Why? Because if you take a look at the 30-minute time frame and you look at 1130, you're going to see bar number nine of a TD set up nine count. And that can be a bottom. You're going to see a daily, or not daily, but a 30-minute profile that's out there with supported 1482.60. This says that you could easily see a bounce up to 1486, above 1486, 1489, and even up to 1499. Even if you saw that, it doesn't change our weekly and our daily picture that we just took a look at. So now would not be the appropriate time just because of the bottoming signal on a 30-minute time frame for gold. And if you're like John in the den, who's trying to take some uh, long positions here, you can absolutely understand doing that because he sees the TD set up bank count. Now, I don't know if that's the case, but we are providing him with with the tools that he needs to understand what the 30-minute uh, time frame chart for gold is communicating to us and he's also got that important uh, TAS profile on a 30-minute basis of 1482.60 and he doesn't really want to see a close below that so Coda I know it took a while to get there my apologies for that but that is what the charts are communicating to me as I see them with regard to the GDX SNP we'll get to JDST but let me get to Lee he wrote in earlier, and Lee was asking if we could take a look at GBTC. I think that is a Bitcoin trust out there, GBTC out here. So let's take a look at that. And Lee wants to know, can you give me your thoughts on GBTC, possible buy target out here? So with regard to Bitcoin, we're going to get right to the heart of it. We're going to take a look at Stevie's white background charts. Here's what we're going to notice. We're going to notice that price is moving lower, doing less relative energy out here. You've got to add a minimum weight for some type of bullish reversal candle to form on it, on this as long as this pattern is in play out here. But it's got the potential. We can see a nice hammer candle that low has not been taken out. This hammer candle from back on the trading day of September 27th, the low is nine and a quarter out there. You just want to see some type of bullish reversal candle. That's what the daily time frame chart is telling us. What happens if you don't get a bullish reversal candle? Well, the weekly chart would be suggesting that price wants to move lower, lower to where? Well, we can make Make the case that 448 is one of its price targets. That is where price broke out on a Bitcoin trust 
448. You're at 954. It's possible this is making a TD setup nine count on the weekly. You're in week number eight. Uh, it's not the lowest low out there, so we can't go that far and make that uh, uh, make that statement. That would say that you'd see a lower low next week or the week after out there. So maybe this is suggesting patience to you when you take a look at the weekly time frame chart. And finally, when we look at the monthly time frame chart out here. <laughs> You know, heck, this says it could go back to a buck two. We won't go there. We will just say, you know, not, let's not focus on the monthly time frame charts for Bitcoin trust. All righty. So we get back from this breakout here. S&P wants to take a look at JDST. We'll do that to, uh, oops, got to type it in the right spot to do that. We'll do that when we get back from this break. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average Average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige. A living a primal lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Okay, we got two questions to get to in the next two minutes out here. I think we can do both. SNP wanted to take a look at the JDST. JDST is the Junior Gold Miners Index ETF. Here's what we know about it. Um, uh, it's trading above the top of its daily profile. That's 1702. That is uh, nice. It suggests higher price for you. Price is dealing with the top of the weekly box out there. So that says uh, SNP on Friday. You'd like to see a close above 1759 out there. If we take a look at JDST, kind of opposite of the GDX, but here makes a roads momentum indicator bottom pattern. Does that on September 6th. 
The eventual target for JDST should be its resistance level up at 2727. It'll probably take some time to get there, but that's what the charts currently communicate to you and I. So I hope that that helps you out with regard to the uh, Direction Daily Junior Gold Miners Index Bear 3X out there. The last question is from Earl. Earl writes in, he says, has the October low been made? Has the Santa Claus rally begun? And the answer to that question is, it's very possible that it has. Now, I'll give you some backup. I'll get, oh, shoot, I don't have the back. Where did it go? Oh, I know where it is. Give me one second here to pull open that chart. Here, if we take, here's what we know. We know that from a seasonal standpoint, quite frankly, it's October um, 13th or 14th. And what is today? October the 15th, when a October bottom is supposed to occur. Here's what actually transpired inside the Dow Equity Futures contract. This formed its TD setup nine count bottom back on August the 6th. It also created Rhodes Momentum indicator bottom, and it confirmed that on August the 28th out there. Price then moves higher moves higher up towards resistance. It's breakdown level 27,329. And it pulls back to where? It pulls right back to support, 25,910, and is taken off from there. The answer to your question is October 4th. It very well may have been that bottom. And the way that we'll know is we'll see a close above 27,329, or 27,262. We'll go with the former because it's a little bit more difficult to get to. But any close above that says this consolidation period may be over for the rest of the year. Folks, thanks so much for being here, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.